Good afternoon. This is the uh, Vero Beach Recreation Commission meeting Tuesday, November 10th. Call the roll, please. Uh, Ms. Pierce? Mrs. Sheppers? Mrs. Deneno? Present. Mrs. Jones? Here. Mr. Holton? Here. Mrs. Burdick? And Chairman Yem? Here. Uh, minutes October 13th. Anybody have a chance to review them? Yeah. I don't have any comments. Motion to approve. Make a motion to approve. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So I assume you voted for it. I didn't hear you. That's what I'm saying. Aye. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next thing, citizen input. Ms. Della Porta, please, if you'll come to the stand. We're going to give you a picture here in a minute. A picture? Oh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Give it a second flip over, but it will come on. Maybe. Maybe. There we go. There go. Oh, that's great. That. Okay. That's, that's Riverside. Okay. Makes me look really fancy up here. I like it. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm Kelly Delaporta. I'm one of the directors of an organization that you might be familiar with called Go Play Vero. And our mission is to improve playgrounds throughout the community. And uh, most recently, we've improved Humiston Park playground. So hopefully, uh, many of you had, have had an opportunity to get out there. And you did a great job. There. Beautiful. Really, thank those, you. Those kids just ate that stuff up. yeah it's been a lot of fun I'm glad you are glad you're happy with it we're very pleased and um, we are very fortunate in that uh, the campaign uh, to raise funds to improve Humiston Park uh, was so successful that we actually have an overage of funds and so we have chosen uh, to do a new installation at Riverside Park Playground. And for those of you um, who are sitting out in the audience, you may not be aware that there's actually a playground at Riverside Park. Um, it's a smaller playground, and um, we had the intention, uh, and we have been talking with the city, and, and they seem to be on board. We'd like to expand that playground and um, and and just make it a little bit more uh, appropriate for both young and older children. Some of the equipment that's there currently, unfortunately, had to be removed. A similar situation to what was happening at Humiston Park. So as you can see up here on the screen, um, it's going to be just about... I guess you'd call that south, southeast of the tennis courts at Riverside Park. So our intention is to uh, to add another eight or an eight person swing set. Um, we also will be adding a uh, play structure that will have shade uh, incorporated in the structure itself. Um, and then we also have a system which we think is really exciting. Um, if you've been to Humiston Park and you've seen some of the new equipment there, part of that equipment is actually some rocks that the kids can climb on. So we're not going to have rocks that are quite as large as the rocks that are at Humiston Park. They'll be smaller and they're actually called skipping or stepping rocks. Uh, so you can see off to the right um, Obviously, let me back up and say that the, the largest structure that you see um, is the, the uh, swing set. And then if you move over to the right, that's the play structure that will have sort of your typical slides and, and climbing apparatuses and whatnot. Um, that, that will have a shade over it. And then if you move further to the right, you'll see there's a system of uh, smaller rocks and logs that the kids can jump on. Um, and move from from one rock to the next. So we're really excited about this installation, and we hope we have your support uh, in, in moving forward with it. Our intention is to have the installation completed. We, <coughs> our our wish is to have it completed by the end of the year. So um, sometime around December, January at the latest is what we're looking forward to. Why the smaller rocks? The smaller, it's just a different system of play. So rather than climbing on the rocks. Um, so you, you don't want to have each of them where they're almost a carbon copy of each other. Right, it's just a little bit of a, um, a little bit of variety, exactly. There's no, no reason we've seen the rocks, the larger rocks at Humiston being utilized and the kids and adults for that matter seem to be enjoying them. So this is just another variation. Um, we wanted to, to uh, try it out. And GoPlay has been an outstanding partner with us and Kelly and the entire group. 
commendable what they've done, and this is just another notch to that. We can't Kelly, do you need us to? Do we need to refer them on to city council now, or do you already have a date there? I do not have a date as of yeah, yet. Yeah, I, I think what we were just kind of doing with with this one was just to, to let you know, and we'll get with Jim and see if we want to put it on the on the agenda, just to recognize, go play. It would be good to get a recommendation. Yeah. Okay. So we can send a recommendation to city I council. I got a couple questions first. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had the opportunity of actually visiting Hummiston the other night. Okay. Which I was surprised how busy it was. Yes, it has been busy. I mean, not only daytime, but nighttime. So the question I have on this thing, uh, the Riverside, is will that be lighted? No, we don't have the intention of lighting the uh, the playground. I believe the park has um, has opening and closing times. Does it not, or am I? It's, it's usually uh, dusk to dawn. And and the other thing I will say is, at times you will have the lighting and enough lighting out there from the tennis courts that will carry over into that area. I've seen that with the kids in, You're talking in about rivers, there right? now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, I I think it'll be treated much like it is at Humiston because there's really. I don't even know if there's lighting out there. There's, there's not, um, I'm, and I know that's been expressed that people have asked, you know, are we planning to light it? And that's yeah. not, that's not a piece of what our mission is or, or what we're seeking to do. Um, and obviously, as the, you know, we get into that time of the year where the time has changed and it's becoming darker earlier, um, there are a lot of us that would like to be able to stay later. But for the most part, um, you know, we enjoy this. We, we enjoy a, um, a lengthy uh, evening time in the summer. It can be light out there until about 8, 8.30. So that's not part of what we're seeking to do. But should another group want to raise funds to do that, we would certainly be open to that. Well, I was surprised but, how many people were using it. At yes, night. it's wonderful to see it. Homestead. Yeah, it's really nice it's, to see uh, it, it, it sort of have life uh, breathe back into it, I guess. Is the ground recyclable tires? It's not. No, it's a it's a product uh, that is intended specifically for playgrounds, um, and it is uh, it's designed uh, specifically for that use. So, it is ADA accessible fiber mulch, playground mulch. Is there going to be a path leading to this? Yes. Yes. It will not be a concrete path specifically, like you see at, uh, at like you see at Humiston. Uh, there's a you know different. It's a different landscape, different drainage, and so um, the majority of what you'll see will be a, a mulch surface uh, again. Yeah, we're we're, we're going to work with that with Monty's mm -hmm. group with Public Works to make sure that we do everything in compliance with ADA accessibility. Right. Great. All right, I move that. Uh, we recommend and support you in building one in Riverside Port. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for your yeah. support. We look forward to the partnership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Since we've, we've seen the first one. Sir? We've, we've seen the first one at Homiston's. I mean, when this one is totally done, then you're going to go next. play on it, huh? <laughs> so, so far, it's been a great start. Yeah, it turned out super nice. Like I said, I only had the opportunity to go at night. Uh, okay. Any other citizen input? Anybody like to speak on a subject not on the agenda? Yes, sir. Let's give you your uh, name and address. Hello. I'm Ken Roberts. I live in Vero Beach, 1101 Admiral's Walk, Long time. Castaway Thanks. Cove. Uh, I'm here not to ask you for money. I'm out here to thank you. I'm a member of the, uh, the Pickleball Association, and I don't know how many of you have seen the Pickleball Association and playing over at Pocahontas Park. We started about a year of June, this past June, we had about five or six members, people that just like to play pickleball. We had to go down to South County Park because that's the only place that had a pickleball court painted on a tennis court, which is uh, kind of hard because you have to chase the ball so far. So we got booted out of there because they were resurfacing the courts. So we came to Pocahontas, talked to Rob, asked him, say, hey, can we come out here and chalk lines? So we started doing this. It took them about two or three weeks. They got to court down there. We like Pocahontas. We stayed 
the whole time, chalk and lines, up until September the 3rd, I think. And we started with about five or six people. And right now we have over three, 300 on our mailing list that have played pickleball, have an interest. Uh, several of our members have moved here just because of pickleball, just because of Vero Beach. So we really appreciate what you've done for us. And we may be coming back in the future to consider the other courts at Pocahontas, converting them from tennis to pickleball as well. So um, as an ambassador of the association, USAPA, my job is to go out and try to get new people. So other communities, not in the city, uh, that have their own uh, tennis courts are actually converting to pickleball as well. The problem with those is you can't go there. You have to be a resident. So Vero Beach should be very proud of what they've done for the pickleball community and visitors to this area. We get referrals from Riverside Cafe, or Riverside Cafe, Riverside Park, Chamber of Commerce, uh, Rob and his crew. Also, we're on the national website. When people want to see, uh, come to a place and find pickleball, they just go to the map, they pick an area, and they see where, when we play, where we play, and all that. So it is rapidly growing around here. I hope you guys have all seen it. We welcome you to come over. We'd like to work with Rob on holding some kind of a open house, for lack of a better term, to get the community to come out and see what it is, get free lessons, get more people involved. So thank you again for what you've done. It's a great asset to the community. Uh, Ken has been a great ambassador to what, what's going on with pickleball. And um, Ken, a couple of things. Uh, throw out the villages. Tell them what, what happened with the villages, how many people are out there now. The villages is a, is a major recreation area. They have, I think, 150 pickleball courts and uh, uh, 10,000 players, from what I understand. That is just tremendous. And they, they play golf. They do all kinds of things. But pickleball is the main thing. There's a new community I just heard, Harmony Reserve, not in the city. They're putting in eight pickleball courts. They're going to make it like a, a Grand Harbor or Bent Pine, the Mooring, something with golf, only just pickleball. So these people come in. They have fun. We're going to try to recruit them from the villages, get them to come in and buy down here because it's just too crowded up there. It's like 150,000 people. Imagine if Vero Beach had that many more people here. So The other thing is is that if you go out to Pocahontas Park on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday mornings, and even now into the evenings, especially the mornings right now, it's packed. I mean, you're talking 25 to 50 people. Easy. How many courts do you have? Uh, there are six pickleball, and then the two tennis courts are multi-use. So they, they can use eight. They, basically, they can use eight, or they can set up. They have their own setups where they can go individual and set up another three or four courts, I think. You're just talking about Pocahontas Park? Right now, it's just at Pocahontas, right? The idea... What the are you idea, playing on at Riverside Park? Because I know you guys are playing there, too. We played there when the courts were under right. under construction. Correct. That was it. And the idea with the, idea with the, the pickleball was, you know, Ken had come forward with a number of people with an idea, and then the idea was, let's see what happens. Let's get our feet wet. Let's see what happens there first before we expand. And the other thing we wanted to do once... Once that happened, I think the idea is we would want to have it in, if we can, in one location. That's why we're thinking we've started in Pocahontas. That might be where we grow if we're going to grow. But let's is wait there and see. Is room on the, on the, um, in the area to expand? Um, I think the idea with the city the way it is right now, I think the idea would be one that we would want to look at our own land, our own properties. There's room there's there possibility go? of Pocahontas Park could be a possibility. Charles Park could be a possibility. And, you know, we still have an extension at Charles Park that could be a possibility as part of the plan. So, I, you know, I think the idea right now is, like Ken had mentioned, they started with basically a handful to two handfuls of people. They are well up over, and they're getting requests how often a week? Six to eight we, a week? We give what we call us. Pickleball 101, which is free lessons on a Monday morning at 9. We encourage people who have never played it to come out. We get a lot of, uh, I don't want to say retired tennis players, but people that just can't play anymore. The, you, can't, you don't run as far. It's a very social sport. We go out, we get a group of people together, we'll go out to a restaurant or have a picnic or something. Um, so it, it's actually very fun. I would like to see, invite all you guys over when we have a, an open house or a party or whatever, whatever we call it to get people to come in and see it because you should be proud. 
Yeah, I think it's because I remember when we first discussed this. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. we, we're the only courts from that I know of that are dedicated pickleball courts from Daytona down to Palm Beach. The only ones. Mm. So that's, that's a big deal. And, and you guys went out on a limb for it, so hopefully we made it worth your while. Um, as an ambassador, they contact me to do other, other demos. Like we went to Gifford Youth Activity Center today. They have a senior wellness program. Uh, there's probably 40, 50 people in there. So they wanted us to come up. We came up. We did a demo. They liked it so much they invited us back for Thursday. So this is going to be on their plate every week. So that's happening. Friday, we're going to have to visit plantations. They're going to, they might want to introduce pickleball to their community. So we're doing a demo out there. There's 12 or 15 communities around that have pickleball right now that I, I'm just finding out about because you can't get in the gates or the little arm that goes up and down. So, so it's very exciting for us, and we do appreciate. And, and what was great about this project, it only cost the city, from what I can determine, $5,600 more than you had to re when you resurfaced the courts. It was X, and with pickleball, it was only less than $1,000 a court. And uh, we're big proponents of getting city people in. and bringing, We want to bring a tournament in. To bring a tournament in, we need to have at least 12 courts doesn't mean they have to be all pickleball. We can do it at Pocahontas with the six we have, and then we have portable net facilities we can convert the other ones without changing anything uh, and bringing some revenue to the city and the businesses in the area. That's our intent. And that's our intent as well is to, to generate revenue into the city. We're working right now with Ken and his group to decide which approach we want to go with with Round Robin. We just did a um, uh, survey with the public, we've had those starting to come in, and the idea is that we're going to we're going to try and provide a round robin program. And Ken and Chuck are two of the guys that are ambassadors to us, are going to be the ones to help us make those things work for us. Great. Provide Congratulations on Thank your you. success. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Thank you. The anybody else under citizen input have anything to say? If not, we'll move on to new business and skate park is the first part of that. So who's speaking, Eric? Yeah, Eric, Eric Tumso is going to come up and speak, and I'm going to join him a little bit. You guys know me. I'm Jeff over at Leisure Square, Jeff Matthews. Um, I've been approached by quite a few people uh, that a skate park is something that is needed in Vero, and uh, I've been tasked by uh, Rob as well as you know the entire recreation department to kind of revitalize Leisure Square. Kind of, uh, you know, you guys know and the budgetary process, what we're doing at Leisure Square in regards to kind of getting it back up to speed on some much needed maintenance. Um, within that process, I was approached uh, by a, a pretty large group, actually, um, and I've got some signatures. This is over 700 signatures that were started probably way before the process was even brought to me or that there was even something that uh, could be done at Leisure Square. And uh, Eric has uh, been kind of approached by those same people. We've kind of met a couple times and we've put this excellent presentation together to kind of give you guys an idea of, of a direction that we could go to kind of uh, bring people more people to Leisure Square, uh, not just people who skate or people who bike or people who are scooters, but parents and kids and things like that. And just kind of, uh, we think it's a perfect, you know, a perfect area for something like this. And it's a great way to kind of set up the future of Leisure Square. But I'm going to take a step back for a minute and let Eric go through kind of the whole presentation and kind of introduce you to the Vero Beach Skate Alliance. All right. Afternoon, everyone. Eric Tumso, 1351 White Heron Lane. Um, I'm the father of three skateboarders. Um, I've been asked by Rob and Jeff to uh, look at ways to make uh, Leisure Square a little bit more popular. 
Um, so I'm the de facto project coordinator of this skate park, um, and I'm a member of the Vero Beach Skate Park Alliance. Um, so I'd like to give you a little presentation. Basically, our mission of the Vero Beach Skate Park Alliance is to bring a skate park, a much-needed skate park, to uh, Leisure Square. Something that's all inclusive to not only skateboarders but BMXers, inline skaters, scooters, um, and make it a whole kind of wellness experience. So, what is a skate park? Uh, pretty, pretty much, a skate park is any place that sanctions skateboarding, BMXing, inline skating. And I think we've got a few skateboarders and BMXers in here, right? All right, all right. It's best for the community and skaters and bikers if the need is met in a cr controlled and safe environment. Um, and uh, there's an old adage that says, if the community doesn't provide a skate park, the community becomes the skate park. And we've got some pictures here, non-incriminating pictures. <laughs> now, there's no police here, Burke guys, but have any of you done this before? Show of hands? Yeah. Uh, my kids are out there, too. So we really need a place for these uh, folks to go. Um, is there a need for a skate park? Well, there are 20 million skateboarders and BMXers in the United States. The average age is 14 years old. Nearly one in every seven uh, youth are skateboarding or cycling. It's the second fastest growing sport behind snowboarding, so it's huge. I mean, you see it on ESPN now. I mean, there's a lot of uh, publicity behind it. Uh, there's only a few facilities, however, that um, provide this kind of sport. Um, the survey by the Public Land Trust indicated on average the metropolitan area provides 1.86 skate parks for every 100,000 residents. Uh, using these statistical numbers, we have about 11,000 skateboarders and BMXers in this county of 149,000 residents. Right now we've got a 7,700 square foot skate park in Sebastian, um, but that's the only one in the, in the county and, and Vero Beach doesn't have any. So based on the SAM formula, we probably need about 60,000 square feet of skate park in order to um, accommodate the, uh, the skateboarding. Uh, what's the impact of a skate park? Well, it provides a safer environment for skaters and bikers. Statistically, out of the 42 bad incidents that happened last year, 41 of them were outside a skate park. You know, you get, you get hit by cars, uh, the ones that um, build their own skate ramps and stuff like <clears throat> stuff like that, that's where you get the injuries. So skate parks are very safe. And they provide healthy choices. We want to, we propose it at Leisure Square because it's, uh, the campus has everything we need. It already has an infrastructure, it has a pool, it has a fitness facility, parking, you name it. It has pretty much everything. The skateboarding is a $2.5 billion industry and it attracts out-of-town tourists and skaters. How many folks go out of town to skate, right? So they're all going outside of our, our beautiful city to do just that. Skateboarding and biking, biking offers endurance training, teacher precision, and coordination. And it's a perfect crossover sport for things like surfing and skimboarding. It's often been discussed in the past. I mean, Jeff has been trying to do this ever since he was knee-high to a grasshopper. I mean, he wanted a skate park here but it's always been an issue with liability. Well, the state recently passed Regulation 316.0085, which indemnifies any municipality from any kind of liability uh, from injury for, uh, at a skate park. So that's a game changer. Absolutely. So, yeah, even if you, you sign a waiver or whatever the case may be, you get injured, it's pretty much kind of like going out in the ocean. Um, the, you take uh, assumed risk. Um, so that, that issue is off the table as far as we're concerned. What are the safety considerations? Statistically, skateboarding and BMXing is safer than all the major sports, basketball, baseball, football. I mean, you throw in probably rugby, ice hockey, all that stuff. It's, it's safer than any of those sports. And most injuries do occur outside a skate park, homemade ramps, hit by vehicles, um, so <clears throat> the city does require, and the skate park would require anyone 16 or younger to wear a helmet. But regardless of that, the, the city is indemnified by any liabilities, from any liabilities. So why is Leisure Square a great location? 
Well, Jeff and Rob asked me, through my background in the health and fitness industry for 20 years, they've asked me to go in and take a look at Leisure Square. And, <clears throat> and Leisure Square is definitely a, a wonderful spot for a skate park. <clears throat> There's a thing called USP in business. It's a unique selling position. And what's been happening over the years is that right now we've got 28 other health and fitness, uh, health and fitness facilities in Indian River County. And we're slowly losing um, <clears throat> the, uh, the market share. So having a unique selling position is important because there's a need by the community or from the community for a skate park, and there's a need for Leisure Square to make it more popular. So it's got everything you need. It's got the visibility, <clears throat> for, uh, supervised visibility, um, has easy access for emergency services and police if need be. Um, it's real close to 16, it's right on 16th Street next to the Go Line Interstate 95. It already has all the infrastructure. It has the lights, the electricity, the bathrooms, the staff, <clears throat> the fitness center, excuse me. <clears throat> so it has all that. Plus, we want to integrate it into the already the wellness program that Leisure Square already has. The pool, the after school activities, the um, um, the summer programs are huge there, so this would just add to it. And it's right in the middle of town. You've got the high schools nearby, uh, the boys and girls clubs, etc. This is an aerial view of Leisure Square. <clears throat> and what we'd like to propose is that top of the page is the north, bottom of the page is south. Those two football fields would probably be in the the, will be in the central western part of that you want western that uh, football field. Eric, you want to yeah. point that out? Just yeah. show them on pointing with your finger where you're looking. Do I have a pointer? That pointer won't work. No, you might want to use your finger or something. Just put an outline of where you're thinking. <laughs> you can go. Is the, there a map? Is the mouse down there? There's a map right there. Can they use jump, the mouse? Jump. Is there a pointer? Is the mouse down there by the computer? Does this, can... does this have a red yeah. light? Uh, yeah, but it won't show on the TV screen. Oh. Uh, we don't have one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, never mind. <clears throat> well, picture a skate park right there. <laughs> <clears throat> so the, t there's a, that, the bottom of, the, of your picture are two football fields. Right now, they're not really being used. It only brings in 1.5% of the revenue, so that's about $3,600 a year. Um, so the skate park would be on the kind of the western football field. So there'll be space for other activities as well. So <clears throat> so it, basically, if we put the skate park here, it would have it would improve the space utilization of the existing football fields. It would offset the cost of running Leisure Square. Right now, it costs the city about six thousand dollars a year for irrigation and mowing on of those two football fields. And like I said, right now it constitutes 1.5% of Leisure Square's revenue, or $3,600. Um, speaking with uh, Monty Falls, he said about $1,000 worth of damage happens to our parks every year from skateboarding. Not you guys, of course, but uh, no. other folks. Um, and local businesses, of course, we don't have numbers on that. But if you go downtown, Humiston Park, or any of those places, you'll see the skateboarders and BMXers using um, the city park for a skate park. And the other great thing, it's already zoned for recreational use, uh, the area that we're proposing. Uh, the Vero Beach Chamber of Commerce has also, also endorsed uh, the idea because this skate park would be great to have regional and district competitions. So it will bring local, uh, we'll bring folks from outside using our hotels, our restaurants, and other businesses can benefit from it. Will there be a fee to use the park? The answer is yes. Um, Leisure Square is proposing a $10 per month unlimited use. Not only do you, for $10 a month, you can come and go as you please, but you can also use the pool, the fitness center, volleyball nets, uh, basketball courts. It'll pre be a whole wellness experience for you. Or $100 a year, uh, $5 drop-in rate, unlimited access. What about the noise? Isn't it noisy? Well. Statistically, um, 
my conversation with you is about 60 decibels. Normal street noise outside on 60 is uh, 60 or 70 decibels. Skate parks are about 65 decibels. So it's much quieter than the football games if you would have the football games on those fields, which is 115 decibels. You got that one. Yeah. So how much will it cost to build and maintain? Team Payne Skate Parks, they're right out of Orlando. We've already contacted them, and they're already on board with helping us put this together. Their average per square foot is about $45 to $50 a square foot. Uh, the maintenance is estimated to be between 1% and 2% of construction costs per year, which would be about $9,000 to $19,000 a year. Um, all of this stuff will be funded privately. We intend to raise the money through fundraisers of a lot of different varieties, and we feel strongly that we can get the money together to make it happen. Like Jeff said, we've got over 700 signatures, and of course you see all these folks out here, just a fraction of the people who are interested in this uh, hugely needed facility. My organization, the Vero Beach, Scape, uh, the, the, uh, Vero Beach Lifeguard Association, <laughs> I, kinda, I got a few of them here, um, we're already on board, um, and we will uh, use our 501c3 designation for any donations. We've already fronted the $2,000 it takes uh, to do a um, geotechnical survey of the two football fields. That's happening right now. Just got off the phone today with uh, KSM Engineering who is doing the, the survey and they, they're not done, but preliminary reports saying there's no problem with the structure and it, uh, being able to build on that space. And we're estimating if you get like 500 skaters paying $10 a month, you're looking at $5,000 revenue, plus all of the ancillary things, um, skate lessons, um, after school programs, uh, summer camps, uh, food, food and beverage trucks. I mean, this could be a whole destination location for not only the folks of Indian River County and the city of Vero Beach, but Martin County and Brevard County. I mean, it'll be a place to go. As you can see from the show of hands, most people go out of town to go to a skate park, so why not have them come here in relative safety? And so we, we're proposing and hoping for your uh, endorsement that we uh, are allowed to go ahead and, and try to raise the money to put the skate park at Leisure Square three different levels. We'd love to get the $950,000 to build a 19,000 square foot facility, of which those drawings represent. But if we can only get $750,000, we'll build a 15,000 square foot park, etc. So um, those are some pictures of the proposed, lo uh, proposed skate park, and we really, really would love your endorsement to go forward and try to raise the money and make this thing happen and really revitalize Leisure Square and make it be a destination location. I like it. I had a question, Eric. So, so what's the access to get back to this the skate area? What we what what I propose is as having a some command and control within the campus. So right now, people come through um, the front doors at Leisure Square. <coughs> I'm proposing that we we close the gates on the east and west sides of of Leisure Square and make it a campus. So. You enter and egress through the um, the front desk, so everyone would have a member number. Everyone would have um, a waiver if it needs to be signed, et cetera, et cetera. So entrance and egress right through the front doors at, of Leisure Square, and then you would walk to the back. So it's grass all the way back there. I mean, I'm wondering, you know, run a sidewalk so they can just skate back there. Sidewalks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sidewalks. Um, sidewalks around. I mean, you go through the front doors, a double set of doors. You make a right, and you go through the um, covered spots right, right through the back. Right. Eric, my question to you is that how many have, have watched that on CNN, the professionals for the skateboards? Those guys are good, but the thing that gets to me the most Instead of ramps, they're using these big semicircle things, and they they go all the way up and all the way across, and there's there's nothing to catch them for quite a distance. <laughs> <laughs> there's ramps. One mistake, 
They know that. <laughs> and, and you <laughs> had it. They know that. <laughs> we'll, we'll, would we want to go that far? I think skateboarding itself is, is a great sport, but in my mind, that's just too cotton-picking far. Yeah, I think uh, some of the things you see on TV are, are not what we're proposing. Um, and like I said, statistically, it's safer than all the major sports, football, baseball, basketball, everything else. So even though it looks dangerous, and it could be potentially, but yeah. um, some of the different um, things that we want in the skate park, I don't think would be as dramatic as what you see on, on TV. There won't be any sharks out there. Yeah. No. I, don't know, I don't know how many people realize it, but it's been over 10 years ago right there at the Citrus Bowl. They sat one up for a day, and you went down to see it. And what those kids were doing, and none of them fortunately made a mistake. But this was 10, 12 years ago. And I'm, boy, I hope we well, I know a lot of there's some here. folks here that like to speak about um, the need for a skate park, and they they might be able to educate us more on the the different things as far as that's concerned. I mean, my concern obviously is for Leisure Square making it more viable for my my kids to skateboard in a safe environment. Um, so that's why um, you see such a great turnout, and I think it's uh, it's something that can really enhance um, the neighborhood. Yeah, hey, I got a couple of questions. Uh, there used to be football teams, kids football teams, that played on that eastern field during the season. Oh, yeah. It goes back a few years. You've had, in the past, you've had renters use the fields over at Leisure Square, but I don't believe we had them last year at all. And football itself, once we switched from 2002 and the county eventually had their own fields built, took that with them. So basically the people using the fields were the soccer people. Mostly soccer. your soccer, rugby, and um, a little bit of your um, ultimate, ultimate frisbee. frisbee. Yeah. So, and one of the things that I know that um, Eric and, and Jeff were looking at with their proposal was to continue keeping at least one fi one field open. Yeah, because they're talking All about right. doing the western field yeah. only, right? Yeah, that's correct. And even I don't think you need that whole field. What you're talking about? You're talking about nineteen thousand square feet. You know how big a football field is. Yeah, it's 1.3 acres, I believe. One of the things, too, that uh, the Skate Park Alliance is <clears throat> proposing is to make it truly a destination location. You're talking about having, you know, a place for the parents to sit, <clears throat> a place. Uh, they've been talking about maybe kind of a band stage. You can have bands play, an artist wall, like Saskia might be talking about, uh, <clears throat> having an artist wall. So you really can make, uh, make it just a, a neat place for people to go and hang out and, and do something physical, swim in the pool, go in the weight room, all that kind of great stuff. Yeah, but the space you're talking about, 15,000 square feet, actually a football field is 135,000 right. square feet. Mm -hmm. So you're just talking a, a real small area of that field, right. you know, for it. So I think the challenge is and what seating. do we do with the other part of that field? Uh, yeah. Well, I got millions of ideas, so, so that's soccer the guys, how much time do you have? soccer guys could still use both of it. Well, the biggest, thing, the biggest thing I would say, too, Dick, is that we will want to make sure that, first of all, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things that have to be tied in. One, public works and engineering, making sure we have them on board. There might be parking restrictions or things that we might be able to do parking-wise. Uh, the other thing is um, we have to look at the neighborhood itself and making sure the neighborhood we're, we've got to still, you know, we don't have the hours here. We would probably want to, if we're going to have that something like this, what, what are you know, the hours, the hours would need to stay in tune with absolutely with what we have now at Leisure Square, whatever those hours are, and making that, that's closing time. I mean, we used to have to shut it down by 10 o'clock, right? Yeah, well, and Leisure Roughly. Square is closed, to be honest with you, Leisure Square is closed at either 8 or 9 o'clock at night, so it would be closed way before then. And there are going to be some things that we're going to that we would have to work through for sure. There's a lot of logistical things. The other things, you know, with what you know, question Sue asked, we still have work to be done on the 
co leisure square complex itself, there could be a way that we can incorporate into some type of system where people can enter and still do exactly what Eric's saying, but with our new, a new plan of how we build the building and everything else, and without it being interfering that much with other things per se. So yeah, because I remember we had this discussion on skateboard. Ten yes. years ago? Yes, especially when you had Dodger Town. Remember, you had some groups. Yeah, it was even before that. that. Oh, yeah. If I remember right. Yeah. Actually, we had it about going into Leisure Square. Right. You know, back, I don't know, it was 2000, 2005. Yeah. And, but we also had insurance was a problem then, which has been solved. Correct. Okay. But we also had a discussion on the neighbors mm -hmm. about the lights mm -hmm. and noise you know it's uh so that's an issue that's going to have to be faced absolutely you know my thing is is that if you have public meetings to to put it together one of the big obstacles that's really a huge obstacle as far as we're concerned at this point in time and I know Eric's right. There, you know, there there are people out there that are will, willing to support. But one of the biggest obstacles is trying to get the monies generated to make it happen. That's a lot of money. And to it's me, lot of money. your neighborhood, again, your neighborhood. To me, I, you know, I, I don't see a problem with you know having if this is something that you guys are recommending having something handed out. Um, to the neighborhood around the area just to let them know this is being considered you, you know, know this, for the future this is the next step up from um from what they're doing what from what kelly's doing with the playgrounds you know when the kids right. outgrow the playgrounds they need something else to do and right. it can't be hanging at the mall every that's night. right and that's right i mean the thing is is this is something that you're you're going to have a transitional period of you know, let's face it, all ages. But, you know, I, I do believe there are some obstacles that have to be overcome. Uh, the other thing I would say is I think that those obstacles can be thwarted as long as, you know, we may have to come in soft. Again, like we said with the pickleball group, what we say with most groups, when we have something new, we may have to go soft. We may have to go with hours being a little more limited to start. And then as time goes by and everybody's gotten used to, we expand it further. You know, I don't see a problem with that. And I know this, I'm sure this group here and all the hundreds and thousands of people that are here in this town who do these things would be fine with that because the idea is we have something here. You know, it just might be something that we just, again, leisure square hours are until eight or nine. Well, it might be like you mentioned, Dick, it might be something where we start with everything goes until six or seven at night. And then once... You get used to it, and like Eric's saying, the noise levels really aren't that high. Then that that could thwart a lot, and that could also thwart your idea with the lights and everything else, like you mentioned, Dick. Because they had they always had concerns about that, even when you had football out at Leisure Square. Oh, I know that. And and when you had teen events, specifically teen events, more than more than the football per se, it was more of the teen events, and those la those went until ten at night. You know, right now. Uh, you know, I would, and uh, in my, about that in too. my opinion right now, and I realize I know the folks here would love to have the thing open till 11, 12 at night, but I think you have to come in soft. You've got it. You've got to get the idea going. You got to get used to it. And then you can eventually work its way out if that's workable. What's Eric's next step? Well, hopefully you guys will endorse it. Then we're going to go to the January 19th city hall meeting, right? <clears throat> I got it. And then, we're gonna, questions, yeah. and then we're going to ask you for money. <laughs> um, by the way, I did meet with Chief Curry, uh, police chief, and he is supporting uh, the, um, the endeavor as well. All right, I've got a question. Yes, sir. The business side of this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got three, small, medium, and large. When is that decision made? I, I think... Um, I think if the momentum starts to wane after a while, um, I think then you could probably, you can determine the threshold. Well, <clears throat> if we need another $25,000, then we're going to just have to go with level one or whatever. But I'm confident that we can make it to the 950. I really am. 
I mean, can you do it in phases? <coughs> that was talked about. Um, it's been my experience, however, that you know, once you get something and you start it, and it's, it's going to be difficult to start back up again. But that's been my experience. But I don't know that answer. Yeah, here's my other question, because based on what I saw happen up in uh, Sebastian, they built the park, and then they got into financial difficulties. So what protection does the city have once this is built for there to be enough money to carry it through operationally? In my opinion, the infrastructure is already there. You already have folks at the front desk. You already have lights. You're already paying for the, the maintenance of the facility. If anything, you're going to have now less impervious surface, so you're going to have less maintenance costs than you do now, statistically. So, But who's going to pay for it? Well, yeah, it's going to come at a cost, um, but, I mean, it's the second fastest growing sport in the United States. So, I mean, taking those statistics, I think, um, even if you have 200 kids using it, you're still going to at least break even. And just to interrupt Eric for a second, you know, the city of Sebastian, when they put together their park, they didn't quite put together a park like this. And it's no offense to the city of Sebastian because what they did was innovative at the time. Um, when they went through just recently and kind of redesigned the park, it kind of fell short. Um, but something like this isn't anywhere close to what Sebastian was doing. And, and I feel that this will, if we got to this point, which this is the $950 or $950,000 park, that we won't have a problem for future generations going forward for these kids that are now at Hummiston Park and go play Vero, and then what are they going to go to? You know, for me, on a recreation side, it's a demographic that we're not hitting. That's um, right. You know, I mean, we have a wonderful gymnastics program. We have great parks and playgrounds, but these people need a place to go and I, I, I it's not a sport that's limited to 12 to 18 year olds I mean it's a sport that I do you know it's a sport that people older than myself do yeah I and, don't think we're talking about that I think we've already accepted the idea of a skate park well I, yeah okay. but what I'm saying is that the, it's not just going to be something that you're going to go to once and never go back again you know and I think that kids in this room will be going to this park for the rest of their lives. And all so their the, little the brothers revenue, and sisters that aren't here yet. Right. You, know? you have two generations, right? Right. Here. So the revenue that is going to be a constant because it's going to be something like, say, Sebastian Inlet State Park. You have to buy your yearly pass every year to continue to go there. You know, if you decide one day, hey, I'm not going to do this again, you know, that's different. But this is a lifelong kind of hobby and kind of sport. So, you know, I feel that it's something that's going to be able for us to maintain and I, I feel that something like this is going to be vital to leisure square where the revenue is going to come in on other streams besides the skate park and it's just going to kind of feed itself but that's just my opinion mr o'connor you want to say something Uh, first of all, let me say I wholeheartedly support this project. If somebody's going to build you a $900,000 asset, and if the statistics hold true what the maintenance is of that on an annual basis, that's something the city should be willing to pay for, such as we do for our playgrounds. If it gets to the point we can't afford it, the same thing we did at the playgrounds, we took them offline. And then the community has to come back and re-support that effort. But I, I agree. I, I think this is far superior to what was done in Sebastian. And it's also going in with a lot of review from the city because public works will be involved in that. Our engineering folks will be involved. So the asset before it's constructed, we know it's going to be the right thing at the right time. Uh, and Eric sort of joked about the next time he comes, will be asking for money. They, typically, when these types of things are done, there are things that we do that are amenities. For example, the Hummelson Park. Uh, we paid for the um, uh, the concrete around that took and and the mulch, the endless orders of mulch. Uh, but those are things that we accept as part of our responsibility as be partners since the asset is going on our property. But it also gives us that ability to review what is being being constructed. So I, I think that 
The issue is if we accept that we need a skateboard park and it is a facility that does meet a changing demand, pickleball being an example of that as well, where we have done some work and it has been a cost and we all absorb that and understand they're minimizing the cost on our behalf. They're also bringing the support to use the facilities as opposed to us going out and building a skate park and saying build it and they will come because usually when the city builds something and say they will come, they never arrive. So this way they have a vested interest, become stakeholders in it. And, and I think it's the best way, and it is the right way to, to build a community asset. So you have to hand it to them for you know, putting it together, bringing the support in, and hopefully be able to raise the money. I think what they're asking you is would you endorse this type of concept to go at Leisure Square? Worrying about the details, for example, the hours and the lights, and uh, as Rob says, that we have to go in and do a uh, soft landing in order to make it work, but at the same time, we'll, the community will know that this is being proposed at that location. And But we, we see a lot of change in what is being demanded for the use of recreational facilities. And football being an example, I mean, when I grew up, pick up football was just the, the nature of the beast, but people don't do that much anymore. So it's now it's changing to skateboards and all that. And I had a, a son that was a skateboarder and he took advantage of all the parks where we were. Unfortunately, they were not skateboard parks and bricks have a tendency to break when skateboarders Almost go riding off the edges of those, so. What's right. the timeline on this? What are you thinking? Well, yeah, that boils down how much, how quickly you can raise the money. The average skate park takes about two and a half years to build. So we're hoping to make it less than that. Mr. O'Connor again. Uh, so you need a motion for the concept of a skate park on that western ball field, is that sufficient? That that be sufficient, uh, and that will give us the ability to move forward on a project and a land use that is on a recreational complex that you guys are sort of responsible for giving recommendation to the city council. All right, I so move. I'll second it, and I'll be glad to sponsor some of the kids each month. All right, discussion. Greg, you want to say anything? I, I think skateboarding is a wonderful thing. In fact, when uh, Jim, when you and I met at Homeston Park, there were three or four young men on skateboards, and they were just having a blast. And you could see in their face, boy, would they like to have a facility where they can do their thing on the skateboard. And you could see that even at Homeston. All right, we actually are supposed to have public input on the motion but we can we can save everybody a lot of time if you don't do a lot of public input and just move it forward i'd actually you know, to introduce yourself again. my name is chris warren i'm a business owner here in town building swimming pools and i actually live 1246 37th avenue which is actually butts up right to leecher square so on the light pollution and the noise, I believe it's already there, the light every night, you know, and it doesn't bother us. You know, I, I can see it from my house. It doesn't, it doesn't have, it doesn't play into my life. So on that notion, I just wanted to put that out there just for you guys, you know, and uh, yeah, basically I would, we would all love as a community, as bikers, as skateboarders, as parents, we would love this to happen. So okay. appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else? One more. <laughs> My name is Jacob Matthews. I'm a resident of First Street Southwest. Um, this skate park is actually capable of, with the parking as well, um, doing professional uh, events, which are pretty substantially nice for the community. Uh, that brings in people from Tampa, that brings in people from Orlando, um, and the parking, I, I, I believe, is pretty substantial for that kind of event. And we definitely have the people here 
Lewis for one uh, that can make that you know that those kind of events happen, and that's just that's hotels, that's bars, that's you know everything around us. Um, this park is bigger than Sebastian's Park. Um, it's able to have those kind of events. And when you ask uh, how do, how does this re, re, you know come back to the uh, community, how does it pay for itself? It's able to do that. You know, this park is big enough to make the people you see on ESPN, you know, that are sponsored by Monster, Red Bull, you know, these are big money people. <clears throat> they can show up. They can skateboard. People can come from all kinds of different towns and cities. And uh, that will create <laughs> a lot of good revenue for our city. So Great. just wanted to keep that in mind. You know. Thank you. My name is Bob Seuss. I live at 905 Surf Lane, Indian River Shores, but I use the Vero Beach mailing address. <laughs> and I was really, I had this long thing I was going to talk about because I also do a talk show on WTTV radio called Local News Magazine. And I thought that I would have to really sell you guys on having this skate park because a lot of times the, the young people that are skateboarders kind of get a bad reputation as being kind of a smart like -y type of kids. And I used to think that too because I'm one of those uh, get off my lawn kind of guys, you know, and I don't have any kids. But I had the opportunity to talk to, to one of the kids who was skateboarding where he wasn't supposed to skateboard. And I said, why are you doing this? And he said, well, we have no place else to go. You know, this is something that we all like to do. I don't play football. I don't play basketball. I don't play baseball. I don't play soccer. I don't play lacrosse. But I'm pretty good at skateboarding. It's just that I don't have any place to practice my, my skill, to hone my skills. And I thought, you know what? I think the, the reason why these kids may come off as having an attitude is because there's too many people like us yelling at them all the time to get out of their way. So I'm, I'm very thankful. <laughs> I'm very thankful that you did what you did, and Eric and I will be talking about this tomorrow on my talk show, so I'll just thank you very much. Thank You're welcome. You. Thank you. you can't while you're doing public comment. Anybody else have anything to say? Come on up. How many more of you want to say something? <laughs> All right, just come on up and get behind her. Get behind her, if you will. And then we'll cut it off after you and go to a vote. We have to go to a vote. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Nicole Voorhees. I live at 2343 Third Street Southwest. I actually have grown up with a lot of the people you see here. They knew me from about age three and on. I know that this has been something that's been on the agenda for a long time. I would also like to put out there that this would not also be used by, <clears throat> by skateboarders, but I'm currently playing roller derby. I actually play for our state team. I currently go all the way to Melbourne, and I use their skate park in order to actually practice and do things that I need to do. In order to do that, I do that about four times a week. That's commuting an hour there, an hour back, two hours there. That's four hours out of my day. I'm also a mom. My child is three years old. He's currently learning how to skate. And it would be something that, for somebody like me, that would be a great thing that I would be able to do with my child where I don't have to travel and do four hours out of my day in order to do. It's something that... Like, we have a lot of um, roller derby people here in F Fort Pierce, here in Vero, also in Melbourne. And the skate parks near us are not big enough, and we have to go to Coco, sometimes to Orlando, to be able to practice these skills. And in order for us to do that, it requires a lot of money that we don't have. I would much rather pay the $100 a year to go and use the skate park than the $100 for that one trip to make that one trip to go somewhere else like Orlando or Coco. All right. Hello, my name is Lewis. I live at 1255 31st Ave Southwest. Um, I'm a business owner in the city. I've had my skateboard shop for 12 years here in Vero Beach. I'm a father of two girls, a husband, and I've been skateboarding since I was 12. I'm 39 years old. Um, yes, it's a hobby for some, but it's a lifestyle for most. And 
we live it. We dream it. We do it every day. It's a part of us. It, it'll never die to most of us. So as Jacob said, um, you know, we can bring huge competitions, big sponsors, um, fun. We can bring fun. We can bring joy to every young family, old, older family. You know, it's about the youth. You know, the, the Go Play Vero's amazing. You know, that's where it starts. And then, as we say, you know, there's a void for us. And that void, thank you for accepting. That's, that's the biggest thing we've, you know, got through so far. So I just want to thank you guys and that, thank you and thank you. <laughs> While you're still here, I do, have, I do have one question for you. Yes, sir. Uh, it's, uh, the skateboarding is, is kind of a, uh, a new thing that's really hitting big. How about the skateboards themselves? Are they built professionally or certain ways so that yes, every, sir. everything is yes, covered sir. and they don't fall apart while somebody's trying <laughs> to They do hold so. up very well. We beat them up very well, and they hold up very well. And I wanted to mention, as you said at the Citrus Bowl, yes, we had Tony Hawk, and Tony Hawk is one of the biggest names in skateboard. We had him here. And that was that That's was probably in, the guy I saw. Yes, in, sir. In that, was in that was in ninety six. That was in ninety six. Ninety six. Yes. And then we had another gentleman, Rodney Mullen, in the actual high school parking lot. We built ramps. We had a competition. This town was different then, and we needed to be like that again. So, Greg, I'm one hundred and ten, and I skateboarded when I was a kid. It's not that new. <laughs> We love you guys. <laughs> All right. Thank everybody. Uh, I'm going to move to a vote. Just do a voice vote because I think there's no opposition. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, unanimous. All right. With, with the consent of the council, I'd like to move, and I probably should have done it at the beginning, but seeing how it's running. Uh, move the review draft till after Shotzi. So Shotzi can do our thing and we can get out. I, of it. I agree. Okay. Shotzi. Petitions. I just want to say that uh, my uh, child was skateboarding in the 90s and the police used to bring him to the house. <laughs> Anyway, and so I would drive them up to Melbourne, and I made them all bring a change of clothes because I couldn't stand the smell after them skateboarding <laughs> for four hours and piling in my car and stinking it up for a week. I'd have to drive around with the, with the um, windows down. So um, he, I'm going to call him tonight and tell him that you guys have finally approved this because he was in that group in 1996 with Tony Hawk. So... I'm happy, very we happy. Be zero about beach that. anymore. Well, it's not, yeah, maybe I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> they used to drive them to Orlando. They had this swimming pool. Do you guys know about the swimming pool in Orlando where everybody skates in this really big swimming pool? Yeah, it's Orlando. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, I used to drive them there too. So I just, uh, I'm really happy. I'm really happy about that. So um, I'm here uh, uh, representing the rowing club. Um, Shotzi LaJoy, 3635 Flamingo Drive, Vero Beach, Florida. We had um, come up before giving you a presentation. Uh, you had recommended us to go to city council. City council had asked us to come back and talk to you again after the lease was drafted and also talked to the Marine Commission. I spent uh, earlier this afternoon with uh, the ambulance squadron going over the lease. And um, I don't know if you have any questions about it. Uh, there are a couple. couple. Uh, okay. We've got a letter from Bobby Burdick. She couldn't be here. I'll read it. It says, I am sorry to have to miss this important meeting, but due to unexpected circumstances, it cannot be helped. 
since I cannot be at the meeting, I want to express some concerns I have regarding the rowing club's proposed building. I have been told that they plan to put a 35-foot high metal warehouse on the park property. If that is true, the first thing we will see as we go over the bridge to our beautiful beach is an industrial size warehouse. A building of this nature cannot complement this beautiful waterfront property. I don't know how high the bridge is, but it seems a building that high would come close to the height of the bridge. I urge the Commission members to ask many questions before making a recommendation to the City Council. Do we want our park to be turned into an industrial park? That's her letter. Uh, so the question, I think she really is hit on in here, there are several things, but is the building going to be a metal building? No, uh, our plan, our proposed budget right now is about two to two and a half million dollars, and we're going to build a signature building that has a 8,000 square foot footprint with a 4,000 square foot upstairs air conditioned space. We'd have four bays. We are having, um, in our lease, we have a bunch of provisions to bring our architectural renderings up for approval. I'm not sure if you'll be part of this approval, um, but um, right now we needed to have a lease so that we can invest money with the pre-design. Uh, we have no intention whatsoever of building anything that Vero Beach wouldn't be proud of. And uh, we're using state-of-the-art boathouses right now as our jump off point boathouse row in uh, Philadelphia, the community rowing facility in Boston, uh, which they spent $10 million on their facility. Uh, I think this will be something that everybody will be very proud of. I, I That's just, I don't know where um, that particular rumor started, but that was never, ever our intention, so. Okay, that's good. We okay. Great. Anybody else have questions? No, I don't have any questions. Greg? No? I've got two questions, which are probably okay. more Mr. O'Connor is going to have to answer. Uh, in this lease, it has uh, a tax of $43.75. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. All right, Wayne. Wayne Command, City Attorney. Uh, that's sales tax that's required to be collected at the time rent is paid. And oh, unless okay. they want to provide um, documentation that they're tax exempt, we have to charge it. Okay. okay. Since you're there, I have one other question okay. for you. <laughs> Uh, under insurance, it says commercial general liability insurance, commercial general li liability insurance providing for all risk, which protects tenant and landlord and other release parties, you know, from claims. Didn't we used to have in the leases the clause that the city was carried as additional insured? It's in there. It's, it's in there. It's another section that it refers to all the different coverages except for, I think, workers' compensation. They have to uh, make sure that the city's a, an additional insured. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was. Oh, it's in there. Standard. Yeah. It is. All right. That's all I have. Good. Mr. Chairman, on the design of the building, uh, Shotzi has shown us several different designs of buildings that they're looking at. Trust me, it will not be a metal building of a warehouse standard that will go in there. It has to be reviewed and approved by the city for the design of the building itself. Well, you know how rumors are. Yes, sir, I do. All right. Okay. Uh, you need us to send it forward? We need a motion. I make a motion that we forward Shotzi and her lease agreement to the city council. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It is with a positive recommendation. It is, with a positive recommendation. This is a good day for Bureau Beach. <laughs> All right, then we'll move on to the next thing. Thank you. We're going for our, keep this thing shorter. I guess Tammy left. I when she's up here beating on my head. All right, the next thing on our agenda going back would be the annual. Uh, review draft of the annual report. All right. Does everybody have one? Yep. Uh, 
I like the yellow ones. Pictures are in color. Huh? Let's see if I got one here for you. I have it. Like this? Yes. All good. Yeah, that. I like the color one better. Yeah. Got the color? I didn't get a color one. I got a black and white one. You're special. The, uh, I, I just printed it off. Yeah. It looks better though. That's really a nice picture on the front here. You all seen that in color? Mm -hmm. All right. You got one, Greg? Pardon? Yeah. Yeah, he's got you the annual this? report. Yeah. All right, let's just go through it the way we normally do. You're on, everybody's on page two. Pictures look better in color. I'm getting Okay. You did a good job, Rita. Thank you. As far as pulling it all out. Okay. Here I asked the recreation department for their photos. They had to be Patty. Patty. I wasn't sure the exact was in my work. My gosh, nobody wants to study for the rest of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, page two, comments. <clears throat> I'm good. None, none, none. All right, letter transmittal. I've got a month to write that. Would it be appropriate if um, you wrote something too? No? No, this is basically bottom line, Judy, is this is coming from the Recreation Commission. Okay, to the City Council. That's right. Okay. Yeah, this is a representation of what you've all have been doing. I stay, I basically stay out of it now. And maybe in a year That's we'll for have the best. a picture of Jeff on his skateboard. <laughs> um, sure, we could do that. We could ruin it. Okay, the mission statement. He's a long time friend. He can take it. I'm, I'm moving along. The mission statement. Mission statement. It's the same as we've always had. Uh, this incorporates a lot of pictures, which apparently council members like to see them as the feedback. We want to give them a lot of positive feedback in nice colors so they'll raise our budget again this year. Raise our budget? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean the recreation department budget. That's us. I didn't know we gotten paid personally. Yes. Okay, 2015 project report. Uh, it's, it's kind of uh, didn't know we did so much. Okay, the first one: Bob Summers baseball field, Go Play Bureau, which you know with Kelly she did a super job. Fishing pier. It's coming. I will add in what was approved of today as well at the end of it. Great. That's great. Mm -hmm. With go for it. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the fishing pier is how far along? I think they're still in the, the, I think they've gone through some of the approvals with public works, but I think there's still plenty to go from Rob, fundraising, et cetera. This may be away from it. Do we ever consider having that youth advisory board yet? Uh, we it's had it. it's no, floated. No, we never had it. it it's floated around. There. Well, that one time that was something that was proposed, but then that's been kind of, with the number of, um, with what's happened with the um, staffing and everything else, I think they've just kind of put that on hold for now. Let me know, because I'm still involved mm -hmm. with the two Absolutely. committees over there. Yeah, I think Tracy proposed that. Yeah, a while ago, and I think. No, I proposed that she copied it off. Oh, Okay. All right. Before she went on the, the council, uh, budget update. Okay. Pearl Beach Art Club. Is a good accomplishment. City power plant land. I'll talk about that. The chairman's matters. Indian River Rowing Club. Maybe we finalize that today. And that's it. Any suggestions? Yeah, Changes? I have something about your junior staff in there. Isn't that a special thing for you guys? Do you sponsor it? The junior staff program? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Let them sure. know that you do that have a genie added. shot because those guys are good workers. I've got pictures. Okay. Is that what you would do? Is add a picture? We'll get it to we'll get it over to Rita. You want me to post it under the junior is it a junior staff recognition awards is what you're referring to? No, just that they have a program that kids can be involved in. Read on page eight. You might want to add that the recognition of the junior staff to the um, the recreational programs and events under task. You see that? Yep. That would be great. All right. So you're going to pull a picture. We'll leave that to you, Rita. Okay. Um, the, 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 wait. Do we want to say anything about the dog park? Was that something that you guys did last year, this yeah, past year? One. I don't know. They, uh, they've gotten they built last year. They had their ceremony. It's 2014. Right. But you guys made the approval. I think you had approved it. I don't know if it was before. Uh, they are celebrating their first year this weekend, yeah. actually. Yeah. So. Right. So it was in last year's. All right. Annual report. You can put that. I'd put that under test too, Rita. Why not? I think you guys had already approved in the last report the actual dog area. It's been a year. All right, Mark and Brew. My question is: Do we need to bring this back for approval? With the changes, or just go ahead and print it. Print it. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, I think if you update the whatever we have and read it, just puts it together. I think that's sufficient as long as you guys are all amenable to that, Dick. Okay. Thank you, Reed. Recreation directors matters. Uh, just to let you know, we we had the Halloween parade, the 57th annual Halloween parade, and it um, Bobby's recommendation of having it over the women's club really worked out well. We had an improvement in the number of participation in the participation levels. Uh, we thought it went rather smoothly. Uh, it's really nice that when you are the last last people to to walk in the parade to look up and see pretty much the crowd from. 21st Street all the way up to your parking lot heading into the uh, community center for the costume judging contest to see people just completely lining up that street. That's phenomenal. And um, I would say we probably had in the neighborhood of overall as people hopped into the parade, everything else, maybe six to 800 people. And then in the costume judging contest, I think we wound up having probably somewhere between 150 and 250. It was good participation and good there good program. Go. It went very well. And again, thank you to Mulligans for being the major sponsor and all those other people that helped us out, it, including it's the volunteers. Growing, right? Actually, mm -hmm. the Halloween parade is growing. Well, it's grown from last year. What we did last year is we went out of the um, Pocahontas Park and, and changed the route. Bobby had recommended that. And her recommendation worked out real well. And I, I think that between um, uh, Gabby and Eric and some of the staff, they had some pretty neat ideas for the future that maybe we'll even spice it up more and get it even bigger and without very limited uh, cost to the city. But you're getting greater participation. Yes, we got great, definitely greater participation. No Thank question. Thank you to your families coming out helping us too. Mary and <clears throat> Lee came out. I mean, everybody's family was there helping them. Well, on behalf of all of them, thank you back mm -hmm. because we know you were there too. So. Um, the other thing was the Christmas drama. I'll let Patty yeah. talk about that. It's coming soon, December 20th. There will be two shows, 2 o'clock and 6 o'clock, again at the Vera Beach High School Performing Arts Center. It's a completely new show this year. Everything is totally different. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, and you'll be getting your invitations soon. And we had a massive gymnastics registration this session so there are tons of kids involved in the program but you have over 400 i would say more close to 300 so yeah. that's great which is 
big. Year was Didn't you have 400 one year? Yeah. You've, you've, it's uh, usually around 200. I, I have but I'm thinking of the other program. Okay. Is that bigger? The circus the is one a little August. bigger because yeah. it involves summer camp. Yeah, that's right. So. All right. Chairman's Matters. November 30th, 6 o'clock, we're going to do a joint commission meeting. And probably seating wise, yeah. we'll yeah, chairman, vice yeah. chairman yeah. up here. So, so he just, you just and answered my question about the 30th. So we're still meeting with the public right here in this And the building. Marine Commission. Okay. And that's why I'm going over seating, just so everybody's what aware. We're going to we're going to have probably 10 commission members in total. So oh. some may end up even sitting in that first row. Mm -hmm. And mm. Okay. this thing could be packed because of what Tammy's done. She did a super job of already. I've gotten responses. I don't know if y'all seen her yeah, I saw advertisement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what has happened, we started off concentrating, and I'll explain right now, you know, on the power plant land. But it was suggested that we include the post office land as well if somebody wants to incorporate a full scale development. So what we'll probably do is show, you know, just the overhead of the uh, waterworks, the power plant, and so people can come up and just, you know, give their ideas. The purpose of our meeting is to solicit public solicitation, okay? We're not really solic soliciting developers or anybody like that. It's I mean, what I thought through, but kind of looking at what do city residents want? It's their land. And on the other hand, because I think you're starting to get how I operate, what do they want to pay for? You know, it's, it's a, to me, it's a consideration because ultimately they come on the bottom line, which we've experienced in other things. Right. <clears throat> so. Uh, any questions? It, it's and well, there's one other thing is we're going to try and limit commission member input. After uh, Tom Giuliano is the chairman of the Marine Commission, so I'll probably open the meeting. He'll give a statement. I'll give a statement on how the meetings, you know, we're going to govern the meeting. Uh, I'm interested in having city residents speak first especially if this is crowded, you know, and then we'll let everybody speak, so, you know, we can order pizza or whatever, depending on what we see. Any questions? All right. We're adjourned. Thank you.